Okay, I believe that the first area formula you guys probably learned in elementary school is that area, that's what we use for a capital A, it's always area, stands for that word, equals length times width. Does that sound familiar? Okay. We're looking today at some shapes that are related to length times width, except for the circle, it's completely different. Triangle, its formula for area is one half base times height. And we'll come down here and calculate this one in just a moment, but I want you to sketch in, if there was another triangle on top of this, it would form a rectangle, wouldn't it? And the formula for a rectangle is length times width. When we're doing the formula for a triangle, we're basically doing the same calculation. We're taking the length and width, and we're cutting it in half, because this half of the shape is not there. Does that make sense? So that's why that formula is that. And let's go ahead and calculate this one here. And we use a space where I drew my invisible rest of the rectangle. If area of a triangle is one half base times height, the base is usually the number that's going across the bottom here, which is 12. And the height is the number that's going up the length of the shape. And this is five. So I'm gonna put that this is equal to one half 12 times five. I have to do what's in the parentheses first. What's 12 times five? 60. 60. One half of 60 would be 30. So the area of this triangle is equal to 30. It doesn't tell us if it's centimeters or inches or whatever, so we're just gonna call these units because area always has to be labeled square. Next up, who knows the name of this shape? It's a parallelogram. Parallel, I'm spelling it wrong. Or are also known as a, a trapezium. There is a trapezoid we'll look at next, but right now we're focused on the parallelogram. <clears throat> area of the parallelogram is base times height, which really is the same thing as length times width. The difference is we really want to focus on it's not the length of a side here, it's the distance between the base of it and the top of it. And so you will often see something with that little right angle symbol there showing you the measurement of the height when you're looking at a parallelogram. So let's go ahead and calculate this one. I'm going to do this over to the side. Always write your formula above where you're going to fill it in. What is the base of this shape? There's nothing written down there. Where can I get the measurement of the base? From the top. It's the same length. So my base is 12 and my height is 9. And 12 times 9 is equal to 108. I like these. You're not having to divide anything. You're just taking the base and the height, multiplying them, and you're done. Just don't forget, again, we always want to say that it's square units. Because we're finding area, we're finding all of the stuff that's inside of this shape, and we divide that up into squares. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the shape down here. We're next looking at the area of a trapezoid. make that so you can see the whole paper. There we go. This is the weirdest formula we're going to do. So we're going to write it down here and then we're going to come over to the circle because I think the circles are easier. So area of a circle is pretty simple. It's pi times the radius squared. And just a hint to yourself, the radius is always that measurement that just goes from one side of the circle to the center. That's a radius. I keep 
circle? This says the shape of the pi radius squared. Another hint to yourself, pi, the number that we use when we're actually calculating this, we use 3.14. If you look above my door, you can see pi going out to hundreds of digits. It goes on and on forever, but just simply for rounding sake, we just use 3.14. So let's take a look at our circle down here. Rewrite the formula. Area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Does this circle have a radius or does it have a diameter shown? The diameter goes all the way across a circle. So this is a diameter. We need the radius. What would half of this be? Four. Yeah. So our radius is four. This time it does have a little inches symbol here, so we know what our units are. We're going to rewrite this as 3.14. We're putting that number in for that, sh that pi symbol there, times the radius squared. We always want to do exponents first, so we're going to start at the right side of our problem. 4 squared would be 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 is equal to 3.14. We're going to calculate that. 3.14 times 16 gets us, I'll tell you what, circles, areas, almost always, like 99.9% .9 of the time, end up with a decimal. Because you're multiplying by a decimal with pi. So I end up with 50.24. And in this case, it's telling us it's 50.24 inches square. I know that because that little, what looks like two commas there or quote marks in the air, that's a symbol that means inches. Okay, we're going to come back to the most confusing shape here. That's the trapezoid. And I'm going to try to make it so you can see both at the same time and then I'll zoom in on places. Here is the area of a trapezoid and I'll be honest I always have to look this up because I never really remember. It is a plus b divided by 2 times the height. You're like I don't know what that means what is this a b h you've got all of these letters in there. Well if we come down here to the shape itself and I'm going to zoom in so we can talk about it a little bit better. Let's rewrite that formula. Area is equal to A plus B divided by 2 times H. A is always the top of the trapezoid. This is A. Anybody want to guess where the B is? That's how I remember it too. Is base, G's bottom, the, always stand for, for base. The H is what goes up up the side up here, right? It's going to give us that measurement. We're not using the 17. That number is just there to kind of throw you off. Sometimes trapezoids will tell you, like if this whole thing down here is 29, sometimes it'll tell you that this section is 4, and then you could do the area of a triangle here and break this up. And I'm going to show you how to do that on the back of the page. But it's not telling us that here, so we don't need these numbers. They're just extras in this, in this one. So we're going to take our A plus B. What's our A? 13. What's our B? 29. That's going to be divided by 2 times the height, which is 15. So because we have this addition up here that needs to be divided, we have to do this first. 29 plus 13, I'm going to use my calculator just to make sure I'm not making mistakes, is 42. 42 divided by 2 times 15. 42 divided by 2 is 21. So 21 times 15, it's a pretty big number, 315. So this is 315 units square.
So my guess is these, this one might be a review. I know in sixth grade math, you guys did some with circles already, but we need practice with it. So if you turn your paper to the back, there's only nine problems. There's only nine problems, but only one of the circles up here has a radius. This one, these two have what? Radius. Diameter, so you have to figure out what the radius is and it's gonna be half of the diameter. These are what we call compound figures because this is a rectangle and part of a circle. Oh, this one is a square, you're right. I didn't look at the numbers. This one is a rectangle and a triangle. It does look like a house sitting on its side. It Maybe it had a tornado and fell over. Let's work on this one together as our first example of a compound figure. Because we're going to have to do area is equal to length times width for the rectangle. And we're going to have to do area is equal to one half the base times the height to find the triangle. And if you're visual like me, you can even show. I'm going to find the rectangle first and I'm gonna then find the triangle, and then I'm gonna add them together. So what is the base, or the length and width of the rectangle? Six and 10. ten. So this is gonna be equal to six times 10, which is 60. Pretty simple, right? Then we have to find the triangle. Do you see a measurement here on the triangle? Mm -hmm. This is the base, and I know it's the base even though it's on its side. That's it. Because the height goes up here. And where am I going to get the measurement for this? From the matching side on this rectangle, which is six. six. So this one is going to be one half, six times seven. Where did I get the seven? From the height. What is six times seven? 42. 42. So one half of 42 is going to be? 21. That's what all of that equals. And then I've got 60 plus 21 is equal to? Mm -hmm. 60 plus 21 gives me 81. Oops, I wrote 80. I just keep making all sorts of little mistakes this morning. 81 meters squared. Okay, so take your time. There's only eight more problems I want you to do on your own. This is due. Whether you finish it today or you finish it on your own, okay? When you finish it, turn it in. With what on it? Your name, today's date, your class period, turn it in, and then we're working on ST math.